Welcome to Growing Chatham, North Carolina Cooperative Extension Chatham County Center's August 2021 podcast. I'm Tiffany Hancock. You can find the Growing Chatham newsletter by visiting go.ncsu.edu forward slash Growing Chatham 821. The North Carolina Cooperative Extension Chatham County Center is pleased to serve our community members and in an effort to ensure that public is afforded the greatest accessibility to our staff and programs this summer, there are a few updates we would like to make everyone aware of. Due to continued issues resulting from last fall's cyber incident, our phone system is not operating at full capacity at this time. If you call, please be sure to leave a voicemail for the extension staff member that you wish to speak to so your call can be successfully returned. Be sure to contact staff using the email and direct phone lines displayed on the Meet Our Staff contact page that you can find on our website at chatham.ces.ncsu.edu. While the extension hallway is not accessible to the public at this time, that does not mean that staff members are not accessible to you. Please be sure to reach out to our staff members to arrange appointments if you need assistance or need to schedule a consultation. Be sure to check out our main website often as new classes, workshops, and news articles are being posted weekly. Have you downloaded the Visit North Carolina Farms app? Download today by visiting your Google Play Store or your Apple App Store. Fox 8 WGHP featured the Visit North Carolina Farms app recently. You can see that story by visiting the Growing Chatham newsletter, go.ncsu.edu forward slash Growing Chatham 821. Now let's move on to 4-H news. 4-H Online 2.0. What is it? and how to navigate it. 4-H Online 2.0 is a web-based system used to enroll youth members and adult volunteers in the North Carolina 4-H Youth Development Program. 4-H Online 2.0 is designed so that each family has an online family profile, and every youth and volunteer has an individual profile under their family profile. 4-H Online 2.0 is a fully integrated management system that brings together all levels of the 4-H experience. Whether it's a member logging in to manage his or her record, a club leader printing mailing labels, or a county agent approving a member's enrollment, 4-H Online 2.0 brings the 4-H community together and keeps everyone involved. Our 4-H team has received several questions about enrolling their child through 4-H online. Some examples of the questions that they have received. Can I enroll my child in 4-H without having to sign up on 4-H online? The answer is no. 4-H online is the only way youth and adult volunteers can sign up for clubs and events that's offered through 4-H. My child is not a member of 4-H and currently is not interested in joining a club but would like to participate in a 4-H activity. Do I still have to register my child through 4-H online? The answer is yes. You will still need to complete 4-H online for your child to participate in any 4-H activity. Do I have to re-register my child on 4-H online every year? Your child's information has to be updated yearly. You would simply log into your family's 4-H account and update your child's information. We have created a tutorial how to navigate 4-H online, so feel free to view the video so that you will know what to expect when you complete 4-H online. You can find that video in the Growing Chatham newsletter. Are you a current or maybe even a future 4-H club treasurer? Don't miss out on this opportunity. Cha Ching 4-H Club. What is this club all about? You'll learn about serving as a 4-H club or group treasurer. Each meeting will include a short lesson related to club and group finances. Opportunity to build and to practice what you learn. How will this club work? The 4-H club meetings will be held via Zoom. A 4-H spin club is a special interest group where five or more young people get together to learn about a topic of interest. The SPIN Club model provides increased flexibility in when and how long groups meet. This is not your average Zoom meeting. When will it meet? Five Tuesdays during the fall of 2021, September 14th and 28th, 
October 12th and 26th, and November 9th at 7 o'clock and runs until 8.15 p.m. So pre-register in 4-H online for the cha 4-H Club. Become a top-notch officer for your 4-H Club. Chatham County was represented at the North Carolina State 4-H Horse Show on July 7th through the 11th, 2021 by several members of the 4-H Horseketeers Club. Kaylee Gant showed in the very large Hunter Division and placed 10th in Hunter Over Fences. Ava Williams showed in the Intro Dressage Division. She placed 3rd in Intro A, 1st in Intro B, and won the High Score Award for the division. Ava and her horse also won 6th in a costume class with Ava as a dragon and her horse as a princess. Horse Couture alumni Caitlin Gant borrowed her sister's horse and competed in the 4-H alumni showmanship class. Normally, showmanship is a very serious class, but this year, 4-H alumni showed their creative side by getting sponsors and dressing up in crazy costumes to raise money for North Carolina 4-H. A fun week was had by all, with friendships and memories that will last a lifetime. Visit the Growing Chatham newsletter and check out the pictures that were taken from the North Carolina State 4-H Horse Show. Over the last several months, the 4-H Youth Stepping Forward program has been meeting to discuss leadership, citizenship, and plan and implement a local service learning project. Youth in the program recently completed their service learning project for Chatham County. In a cooperative effort, the group was able to amass 331 pounds of food benefiting the Cora Food Pantry and the West Chatham Food Pantry. Recipients from the food pantries were delighted with the donations and efforts made by the 4-H Youth Stepping Forward Program. A big thank you to everyone who donated and accepted donations from their churches, family, and community. This goal could not have been reached without the help of our community and local partners. Don't miss this Empowering Youth and Families Program webinar, Youth Opioid Misuse and Alternative Pain Management. In this webinar, Dr. Celeste Crawford, a professor in the Department of Addiction and Rehabilitation Studies, discusses prescription opioid misuse in youth and alternative pain management outside opioid use. As a former middle school counselor and the current director of the Navigate Counseling Clinic, Dr. Crawford has considerable experience when it comes to working with youth suffering from addiction. She discusses what paths can lead to opioid misuse as well as warning signs caregivers can be on the lookout for and strategies they can use should their youth be struggling with substance misuse. Dr. Crawford offers alternative ways to manage pain, which include meditation, cryotherapy, acupuncture, and biofeedback. You can find the links and the videos in the Growing Chatham newsletter. Just visit go.ncsu.edu forward slash Growing Chatham A21. Cool season crops for vegetable gardeners. An Extension Gardener webinar. Coming up, join Matt Jones, Extension Horticulture Agent and the Master Gardener Volunteers of Chatham County for a webinar targeting home and community gardeners on how to grow cool season vegetables. Participants will learn about planting techniques and timing, best varieties, common problems and harvesting methods for broccoli, cabbages, carrots, kales, lettuce, onions, peas, potatoes, and turnips. So visit the Growing Chatham newsletter to register. The link is available in the story. North Carolina State Extension Publications are ready for you. Vegetable Gardening, a Beginner's Guide. Vegetable gardening is becoming more popular, both as a pastime and as a food source. We experience satisfaction in planting a seed or transplant, watching it grow to maturity and harvesting the fruits of our labors. In addition, vegetable gardening offers a good source of exercise with the added benefits of healthy snacks and food for the table. To read this publication, just visit the Growing Chatham newsletter where you can find the link. Get the Central North Carolina Planting Calendar for annual vegetables, fruits, and herbs in the Growing Chatham newsletter. Central North Carolina is a wonderful place to garden. Almost any type of vegetable or fruit can be grown successfully, provided you choose appropriate varieties and plant at the right time. The climate, the season, and potential pests all affect the selection of what and when to plant. So, click on the link to open the Central North Carolina planting calendar for annual vegetables, fruits, and herbs. In the Growing Chatham newsletter, Collard Greens. Grow it, 
eat it. Collard greens grow as a loose bouquet rather than a tight head like other cabbages. Packed with vitamins and minerals, they are one of the most popular garden vegetables in the South and are rapidly becoming a delicacy in northern states as well. So click on the link to open up the Collard Greens Grow It, Eat It publication in the Growing Chatham newsletter. A head of lettuce is the most important salad vegetable grown in the United States. Per capita consumption exceeds 25 pounds and Annually, lettuce is adapted to cool growing conditions with the optimum temperatures for growth of 60 to 65 degrees Fahrenheit. At 70 to 80 percent, the flower plants flower and produce seed. Lettuce can tolerate a few days of temperature from 80 to 85 degrees, provided that nights are cool. Lettuce seed will germinate at 35 degrees, but optimum germination is 70 to 75 degrees. If the plants are sufficiently hardened, they will withstand freezing. Repeated exposure to sub-freezing temperatures, however, can seriously injure or kill the crop. Lettuce has a relatively high water requirement. Soil moisture shortage rainfall will seriously stunt growth and head quality. Irrigation greatly reduces risk of crop failure. Considerable differences exist among lettuce varieties in heat tolerance. These differences are the primary reasons some lettuce varieties can be grown in warmer climates. In North Carolina, the crop can be grown as both a spring and fall crop. In eastern North Carolina, and even during the midsummer in western North Carolina, at elevations over 3,000 feet. In the Piedmont, lettuce is intermediate in season and probably is best as a late spring or early fall crop. Romaine has requirements similar to head lettuce, except it can stand more heat. Butterhead and leaf types can stand even more heat and have a longer season of production. For more about lettuce production, just click on the link in the Growing Chatham newsletter. North Carolina Muscadine Grape Association presents Backyard Muscadine Production. This is a webinar via Zoom. This webinar will be offered twice on the following dates. Wednesday, August 11th, from 10 a.m. until 11.30 a.m. Saturday, August 14th, from 10 a.m. until 11.30 a.m. If you would like to grow a few muscadine vines in your garden, or if you have some and aren't sure how to care for them, this virtual workshop is for you. This workshop will cover variety selection, planting, trellising, pruning, fertilization, and ongoing care for your vines. Led by Chuck Blethen, Jewel of the Blue Ridge Vineyard from Marshall, North Carolina, and Mac Johnson, North Carolina Cooperative Extension, Robinson County. To register for the Backyard Muscadine Production webinar, please visit the Growing Chatham newsletter where you can click on the link. Making Muscadine Wine at Home. This is another webinar via Zoom. This webinar will be offered twice on the following dates. Wednesday, August 18th, from 10 a.m. until 11.30 a.m. Saturday, August 21st, from 10 a.m. until 11.30 a.m. Topics include the special characteristics of muscadines for wine, varieties to use, and quantities needed, along with the essentials of home winemaking, including equipment needed, the basic process, and techniques to make the best wine possible. This session is oriented both towards novice and more experienced home winemakers, led by Chuck Bleffin, Jewel of the Blue Ridge Vineyard from Marshall, North Carolina. To register for this webinar, please visit the Growing Chatham newsletter and click on the link Making Muscadine Wine at Home to register. To find the links to these publications and webinars, please visit go.ncsu.edu forward slash growing chatham 821. Take a virtual tour of the Pollinator Paradise Garden. Pollinator Paradise is a demonstration garden created by North Carolina Cooperative Extension Chatham County Center. Agriculture agent Debbie Roos designed the garden to provide forage from early spring to late fall for pollinators such as native bees, honeybees, butterflies, flower flies, hummingbirds, beetles, and other beneficial insects. The garden features over 225 unique species of perennials, 85% of which are native to North Carolina. The garden is a great teaching tool and is used to conduct workshops and tours for hundreds of folks each year. When tours or workshops were suspended in 2020 due to COVID-19, 
Debbie created a virtual garden tour video so that folks could enjoy and learn from the garden. Debbie just posted two virtual tours from May and June. To see the tours, please visit the Growing Chatham newsletter. In-person pollinator garden tours have returned. Debbie resumed in-person tours of the pollinator garden in mid-May. You can view a list of the tours and register for future tours when they are posted. The summer tours are full, but Debbie will be posting dates for the fall tours soon. So check back often. The link is available in the Growing Chatham newsletter. What's in bloom at the Chatham Mills Pollinator Paradise Demonstration Garden? Debbie has provided a list that is updated bi-weekly. Currently, there are over 70 species in bloom. So click on the links to see what's in bloom at the Pollinator Garden. You can also click on the link to visit the Pollinator Paradise Garden website for lots of photos and plant lists and other resources. Save the date for the North Carolina Commercial Blackberry and Raspberry Growers Association Field Day, an annual meeting. This event will be at Lewis Nursery and Farms in Rocky Point, North Carolina on Friday, September 24, 2021. This is a free event to the North Carolina Commercial Blackberry and Raspberry Growers Association members, but will be $20 for non-association members. Event fees will be collected the morning of the event. The 2021 North Carolina Commercial Blackberry and Raspberry Growers Association Annual membership dues are $50 per farm. If you have not already renewed your membership, dues will be collected on the day of the event for any unpaid members. These monies are vital to continue the success of the association and its members. Click on the link that is available in the Growing Chatham newsletter for the membership form. This month's Farm Visit Snapshot features in Good Heart Farm. Debbie visited in Goodhart Farm outside Pittsburgh in mid-May and again in mid-July. Ben Shields and Patricia Parker started their farm in Clayton, North Carolina in 2010, then moved to Chatham County in 2016 to the farmland once known as Ayrshire Farm after farmer Bill Dow passed away in 2012. Ayrshire Farm was North Carolina's first certified organic farm. Bill built a lasting legacy, and everyone was thrilled when In Good Heart Farm moved here to farm the soil that Bill worked so hard to improve over the years. Farmer Ben Shields and the crew grow over 100 different crops year-round on about five acres total using organic practices. Crops include vegetables, flowers, herbs, small fruits, and tree fruits. They market through farmers' markets to restaurants and also offer community-supported agriculture shares. Click on the link in the Growing Chatham newsletter to learn more about In Good Heart Farm. You can also find the link to their website. Now is a wonderful time to visit one or all of our Chatham County Farmers Markets. You'll find amazing flowers and foods like strawberries, green garlic, cheese curds, tomatoes, gorgeous greens, meats, eggs, plants, and so many other wonderful locally grown products. Click on the link in the Growing Chatham newsletter to visit the Chatham County Farmers Market websites. National Farmers Market Week is August 1st through the 7th, so visit your local farmers market to access the links and to view the virtual tour of the Pollinator Paradise Garden. Just visit go.ncsu.edu forward slash Growing Chatham 8 Two, one. North Carolina Cooperative Extension Chatham County Center will be hosting two V-Credit classes. Both of these classes will be held at the Chatham County Agriculture and Conference Center. This is for the V-Credit for Pesticide License Recertification. These classes will be offered August 16th from 6 until 8 p.m. This class will be repeated on September 9th from 6 until 8 p.m. You can find the link to register for these classes in the growing Chatham newsletter. The Youth Livestock Team is on the move. On July 15th, the Chatham County Youth Livestock Team teamed up with the Alamance County Youth Livestock Team to visit a local beef producer and practice livestock judging. The members were able to judge three classes and receive feedback on their placings. This event 
help prepare the team for their first competition coming up at the end of July. Huge thanks to the Scarlet family for hosting this beef judging practice. Heat stress in your herd. Summertime brings beach days and waves, but it also brings high temperatures that can negatively affect your livestock. These increasing temperatures can not only be uncomfortable for the animal, but it can also affect fetus development, semen quality, and average daily gains. Some symptoms of heat stress include increased breathing rate, restlessness, increased standing time, excessive drooling or foaming at the mouth, isolation. Some ways to make sure your herd is staying cool this summer is to ensure adequate shade for each animal and provide extra water sources. Continuously check your water sources to ensure proper flow. When all possible, avoid transporting and processing animals, especially during the hottest parts of the day. When necessary, work or transport the animals in the early morning while ensuring a low stress environment. Observe the herd regularly to monitor any abnormal behavior. To access the links in these stories and to register for the pesticide class, please visit go.ncsu.edu forward slash growing Chatham 821. Area specialized extension dairy agent Ashley Robbins shares the North Carolina Dairy Producer Needs Assessment Survey. As we move towards getting back to face to face programs, the North Carolina State Extension Dairy Team would love to have some input from our North Carolina dairy farmers. We always strive to put on high impact programs for our farmers and dairy industry clientele. This is your opportunity to let us know what you or your employees would like to learn more about in the upcoming months and years. Let us know what you have enjoyed in the past and maybe what wasn't so great. This is just one step in our effort to reach the needs of our North Carolina dairy industry. You can find the link in the growing Chatham newsletter to the North Carolina Dairy Producer Needs Assessment Survey. Dairy Business Innovation Initiative 2021 DBII Grants. Existing and prospective value added dairy businesses in North Carolina, Tennessee, and Kentucky that develop, produce, market, or distribute dairy products are now eligible to apply for funding through the Dairy Business Innovation Initiative, an effort supported by the USDA Agricultural Marketing Service. Eligibility information, frequently asked questions, application materials, and more are available through the main DBII website. You can find the link to the DBII website in the Growing Chatham newsletter. North Carolina Extension, along with the North Carolina Department of Agriculture and Consumer Sciences, want to support your effort to submit a successful application. So the sooner you let us know you are working on an application, the more likely we will be able to answer any questions you have and or point you into the right direction of resources. For more details, please access the link in the growing Chatham newsletter. There will be an information session on DBII grants. Heard the rumor about grant funds for value-added dairy processing? It's true. If you haven't already taken a look at the application, frequently asked questions questions, and other resources for the Dairy Business Innovation Initiative, please do so. For those interested in more information about the current grant cycle, Extension will host an information session via Zoom on Wednesday, August 18th, 2021 from 11.30 a.m. until 12.30 p.m. You can access the link about the Zoom session in the Growing Chatham newsletter. Salt timber prices in North Carolina increased substantially in the second quarter of 2021. In the second quarter of 2021, both housing and lumber markets started plummeting from the record high levels. In May 2021, U.S. housing stats were down about 3% to a seasonally adjusted annual rate of about 1.68 million units, which is still about 35% up from last year. The lumber markets started dropping significantly in the last few weeks. The Forest to Markets Southern Yellow Pine Lumber Price Index on July 2, 2021 was $566 per thousand board feet, down 53% from the record high in mid-May of 2021. For more on saw timber prices, just access the link in the Growing Chatham newsletter. Sustainable Forestry Land Retention Project webinar coming up. Call Share Programs Preparing Landowners. 
donors to make application. August 25, 2021, from 10 a.m. until 12 p.m. Federal and state governments offer financial incentive programs for woodland owners. Several of these programs provide cost-sharing payments that reimburse landowners for various timber management activities. This webinar is to guide landowners in preparation to apply for forestry cost-share programs with the USDA North Carolina Forest Service and farm loans through the USDA Farm Service Agency. Woodland owners will have the opportunity to hear from agency experts on the various cost-share programs and application process. Be sure to register by accessing the link in the growing Chatham newsletter. Visit go.ncsu.edu forward slash growing Chatham 821 to access these links. Have you ever wanted to enter items into the North Carolina State Fair for judging, but thought, I just don't have time this year, or it will take most of my day to travel to Raleigh? The Chatham County Cooperative Extension Center Pony Express provides early and quick entry for community members. If you are a craftsman, artist, seamstress, food preserver, beekeeper, adult, or youth who wish to enter their items into the North Carolina State Fair, participation is easy. Location for item drop-off is at the Chatham County Cooperative Extension Center, 1192 U.S. 64 Business Suite 400 in Pittsburgh. Items can be dropped off on October 4th and 5th from 8 a.m. until 6.30 p.m. No live exhibits or perishable exhibits will be accepted. This includes, but is not limited to, flowers, livestock, cakes, etc. For more details about the Chatham County Pony Express, contact Extension Agent Kaylee Lawing. The link is provided in the Growing Chatham newsletter. North Carolina A&T have some upcoming events, so mark your calendars. Coming in September, North Carolina A&T Cooperative Extension hosts a hemp field day. In October, North Carolina A&T Cooperative Extension will host a ginger field day. And in November, North Carolina A&T Cooperative Extension will host a high tunnel production and construction field day. Those dates will be announced. Roasted Summer Squash Roasted summer squash is oven easy and super tasty. Rounds of squash are seasoned and topped with crispy crumb topping. This is Tara's favorite way to prepare squash, and she is excited to share this recipe with you. Coated in a seasoned breading and roasted until golden brown, this summer squash will be a new family favorite. To access the link to this recipe, please visit the Growing Chatham newsletter. Tara also shares a honeydew blueberry salad recipe that is absolutely refreshing on a hot summer day. Tara Gregory, Family and Consumer Sciences agent, hosted a webinar last month titled Summer Flavors. This month in the growing Chatham newsletter, she shares with us some facts about some of the fruits and vegetables that you can find in the summer. Yellow Summer Squash. The skin contains most of the nutrition. The smaller in size, the more flavorful. American Indian tribes refer to squash, beans, and corn as the three sisters. When selecting summer squash, do not pick one that's too large. Pick squash that has only a few nicks and scratches. Soft, watery spots are the first signs of rot. Do not buy yellow summer squash if it has wrinkly skin. When it comes to storing summer squash, keep dry. You can store the squash in a plastic bag in the vegetable drawer for one to two weeks. Slice, blanch, and freeze for later use. Next, we're going to find out some facts and how-tos with honeydew melon. Did you know that the honeydew melon originated in the Middle East? It's an excellent source of vitamin C and good source of folate and vitamin A. If picked too soon, it will not continue to ripen. When selecting the honeydew melon, look for melons that give slightly when squeezed. Ripe melons will give off a delicate, sweet scent. To store the honeydew melon, Room temperature for just ripe, uncut melons. If cut, wrap in plastic or airtight container and refrigerate up to five days. You can freeze in light syrup. Now we're going to find out about blueberries. Blueberries' color comes from anthocyanins as antioxidant. It's full of nutrition, good source of manganese, vitamin C, 
and K, as well as essential minerals. Each berry has about 50 little seeds. When you're selecting your blueberries, select plump, firm, with a deep color. Silvery white sheen is called the bloom. This protects the berry and locks in the moisture. Storing blueberries. Cover and refrigerate up to 14 days. Wash only before using. To freeze, lay the berries out in single layer to freeze, then store in a container or a bag. This month, Brandy King, Administrative Assistant, shares with us ways to save money when your child is returning back to school. August is the month that we think of when it comes to back to school shopping. You will see lots of store sale flyers posting great deals, knowing what the regular prices for those items are will help you know if they are flashy sales ad is really giving you a good deal or not. Before you head out shopping, make sure you do your research on the school supplies. This will help you save money and know when a sale is really saving you money. When you see a good sale and you know it's a good deal, Try to shop on Sunday or Monday for that week's sale prices. This will help make sure you get the deal before the supplies run out. If you do get to the store and they are out of that item, see if they have a rain check policy so you can come back to the store and get that price when they get the item back in stock. Watch for coupons for brands like Bic, Kleenex, and Post-its. They always have coupons during this time of year, so even if you do not need these items right now, it is a good time to stock up. Many of these items you can purchase at the Dollar Tree and get your item for free. Make sure to check the coupon policy at your favorite store to make sure you can use them. By looking at the school supply list and making a game plan on how to purchase all of those items at the best price, you should earn an A for staying on budget. We're stepping back in time from tractors past. Modern tractors have changed the way farmers farmed their land. Tractors have allowed farmers to do twice the amount of work in a shorter amount of time. The modern-day tractor had its own problems, too, such as being too heavy and sinking in the mud and causing frustrations and long delays. Some folks questioned if the tractor would have any staying power. Some farmers claimed that mules and horses did better than tractors because tractors could be unpredictable. Other farmers said the benefit of the tractor is that they did not worry about the tractor escaping like a mule or a horse would. Plus, tractors did not have to be fed or have to take breaks to rest. Visit the growing Chatham newsletter, some of tractors past, such as Horse Sense in Tractor Buying, an article in the Solar City Grit from February 9, 1916. This story highlights why farmers may have been hesitant about purchasing a new tractor. Did you know that if a five-acre area was plowed by mules or horses with the farmer walking behind them, that the farmer would have walked approximately 40 miles when the plowing was completed? Don't miss the advertisements from newspapers past, such as in the Chatham Record for May 1921, B.M. Poe from Pittsburgh, a Fortson tractor dealer, he also sold Ford cars. From 1952, check out the advertisement that was in the Chatham Record. The Clapp Brothers Implement and Truck Company selling you a farm all system. And don't miss the story, reminiscing in 1954 about childhood and driving a tractor. It's entitled In Small Places. Here's a little snippet. From a distance, he appeared to be a small man, sitting astride the moving tractor in midfield. At close range, however, I could see that it was not a small man, but a boy, about 12 years old of age. He handled the tractor and plow with skill of one who has worked at such a task for many years. At the end of the furrow, the lad turned his tractor and went away from the road. While watching him perform, it dawned on me that I was observing a significant phase of agricultural revolution. To read the rest of this story, visit the Growing Chatham newsletter. You can also see a video from hay-powered horses to gas-powered tractors. From our community partners, we'd like to share from the United Way. Called North Carolina 211, there's always an answer. United Way partnered with the Chatham County Health Department to bring North Carolina 211 to Chatham residents. 
is an information and referral service accessible by phone and online at www.nc211.org. It is a free, confidential, multilingual resource that connects Chatham residents to health and human services. You can find the link in the growing Chatham newsletter. Chatham 250 Plant a tree for Chatham 250. Plant a tree to celebrate Chatham County's 250th anniversary and preserve a unique piece of Chatham County's history in your own backyard. Chatham 250 is excited to be partnering with Century Farm Orchards to offer a special Chatham 250 bundle of heirloom old southern apple trees. Each bundle will include one ant Rachel Tree, a rare local variety of apple trees that originated in Chatham County and is deeply tied to the legacy of heirloom old southern apple trees expert and late Chatham County resident Lee Calhoun and one heirloom old southern pollinator apple tree of the purchaser's choice subject to availability. For more information, you can find the links in the growing Chatham newsletter. The Chatham County Public Health Department COVID-19 updates also can be found in the growing Chatham newsletter. The links are provided. You can find North Carolina Cooperative Extension Chatham County Center everywhere. We are on the internet, through social media, and our website. Click on the link to see where you can find us online. Visit the growing Chatham newsletter to access the links, videos, and stories by visiting go.ncsu.edu forward slash Growing Chatham 821. Well, that would do it for this month with the Growing Chatham August 2021 podcast. I'm Tiffany Hancock. Until next month, have a great August.